Everyone looks beautiful. Thank you. Where are your masks? Good point. All right. Hello, I'm Adi Ignatius. I'm the editor-in-chief of Harvard Business Review. And this is our panel on advancing Armenia's knowledge-based economy. The transition to knowledge-based economic development is one of the big challenges for emerging economies everywhere. Armenia was on a strong growth path before the COVID-19 pandemic. GDP was grow grew nearly 8% in 2019. Would have seen solid further growth this year if not for COVID-19. The country has been hit hard, though not as severely as many others. This now is a challenge and an opportunity. As the saying goes, never waste a good crisis. So the question is, can Armenia accelerate its transformation toward a knowledge-based economy as it deals with the fallout from COVID-19? We will discuss this and we'll talk about opportunities for investment in the country in a panel discussion with three Armenian innovators. But first, it's my great pleasure to introduce the president of Armenia, Armin Sarkisian, who will start the session off with a few remarks. President Sarkisian was trained as a physicist and computer scientist. He's been president for the past two years, previously served as Armenia's prime minister, as the country's ambassador to the United Kingdom. So ladies and gentlemen, President Armin Sarkisian. Well, very nice uh, meeting you. I'm one of your, your passionate readers, your, your magazine or the review. So it's, it's nice to see you, your, your face. And I would like to start with uh, the question that I was asked yesterday by an Ar a famous Arabic television station. And the question was, is it true that you are a startup nation? Well, I, 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 I felt that it was sort of a privilege that when someone asks uh, to a nation that has four or five thousand years of history, I'm a recorded history asking, are you, are, are you a startup nation? I think I felt really very, very young because one of the features of being startup is being young. Startup means you, you look uh, into, the, into the future all the time. Startup means that you believe that you can conquer the world. Startup means, but startup also means that this is the new way of running or building technology and success in this new world. And the world has changed. Because you asked the question, um, how or should Armenia develop its, its, uh, its uh, technology-based industry in order to go future, to the future? And the answer is there is no other way because we do all understand that the future and uh, the real king in the future in the industry is not going to be oil. Already, if you compare oil companies with the data companies, the data ones are an order bigger than the oil companies. And I do think that the future competition, even the future wars will be based on electronic wars or cyber wars or wars for data. So if Armenia is th thinking to take this opportunity to be a successful country in the next 20, 30, 100 years, we, we don't have, we should, and there's no other choice, rather investing money into educating and developing the new technology-based industry, because that's the future, that's the new oil of, of the world. And from that point, uh, from that perspective, I think we, we have all the necessary ingredients. First of all, this is a small country, small state, but a global nation. So it has wonderful network worldwide, scientists, businessmen, everywhere. So United, nation, United States, uh, Latin America, Russia, Europe, anywhere. Secondly, the, we have inherited from, uh, from the empire, from the Soviet Union, a, a very good educational system and a very good professional professionals in science and technology. I mean, uh, professionals in natural sciences, physics, mathematics, chemistry, 
uh, etc. And as as an example of that, how many countries do you know that uh, have a president who was professor of physics? <laughs> It's <laughs> one. Okay, thank you. It's not because I am I am good. Because the, the the issue is that this country is good. That is giving huge number of scientists technologies, and one of them has become a president of the republic. Third, the uh, innovative spirit is in Armenia, and people you don't have to teach them. There are more individual individuals. These are people that have learned to survive. If you take the genocide of Armenia 105 years ago, a whole nation was scattered all over the world, but they managed to rebuild their country, but also they managed to survive, again, from Latin America, California, New Jersey, up to Shanghai, up to Moscow or St. Petersburg, anywhere in the Middle East. So it's a surviving nation that has this ability of creating individually from scratch, which is a startup quality. Well, this is philosophy maybe, but the reality of life is that the government has to invest a lot of effort and money and, and support to education, 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 and to the uh, industries of the future, including we have to think seriously about giving serious tax incentives to these companies who are working hard in these directions. I will leave you with our colleagues, which they will present you some of the examples of Armenian new technology or new technology thinking. But the summary of all of this is that we are looking forward. Although we have a huge history in the back, we had successes, victories, but also huge pain, but we are looking forward. It's a forward-looking nation. It's a young nation with 5,000 years old uh, passport, and this nation is looking into the future. And as an example of how we are looking forward, you'll see a couple of examples, and one of them is the presidential initiative, which is called ATOM, Advance Tomorrow. So even I, I'm not executive president, I'm the head of state, but I'm thinking of my own project, ATOM, that are, there's going to be a place of... Uh, joint ventures of Armenian atom scientists, technologies, programmers, and multinational companies. And we have signed or pre-signed already with big 16 multinationals, from IBM to Thales to Dassault and others. So artificial intelligence is the future, and we want to contribute there, and we want to be one of, the, one of those nations who are in the avant-garde of development. So I wish your conference success, and I'm, I'm sure that my colleagues that were sitting here, they'll do their great job, each of them presenting what they are doing, but that will give you a, some sort of a flavor, what is Armenia, an old, young country looking into the future. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, President Sarkisian. That was that was a really excellent setup for this discussion. And uh, I know you're very busy. So thank you. Thank you for your time. And so, I want to excuse me because I have to leave. All right. Good luck. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Goodbye. So so with that, we'll move on to the panel discussion. That was a great setup. Um, I just want to very briefly introduce our three panelists. Uh, we have Karen uh, Gregorian, who's head of mass media at Soft Construct Company. We have Jacob Jacobian, who's founder of Startup Armenia Foundation. And we have Marion Lou Papazian, who is chief executive officer of the Tumo Center for Creative Technologies. So, so let's jump right in. We have uh, uh, Karen, I'm going to start with you. And the question uh, is a sort of general one to get us started. And it's really, you know, can you talk about the climate for entrepreneurs and startups in Armenia? Uh, talk about the climate now. And if you can talk a little bit about how it may have been affected uh, positively or negatively by the pandemic. Uh, thank, thank you very much for your question. You hear me? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what, actually, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm a little, we had a, a, a sort of a panel switch. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to actually pose that question to Hako, Hako Bian, uh with apologies. I, uh, 
we had a last minute uh, change in personnel, so I got a little confused. So, so Hako, let, let me throw that question to you. I think that's probably probably better for you to start with. So, really, talk about the climate for entrepreneurs and startups in Armenia, um, and again, maybe how it's been affected by COVID nineteen. Okay, uh, I would like to. I have uh, prepared a presentation for uh, you, and uh, I'd like to uh, now see the presentation a little bit telling about the uh, startup uh, mm -hmm. environment. Yeah, good. I see it. Yeah. And, uh, so um, basically. Uh, uh, we have started Startup Armenia Foundation uh, in 2015, and uh, me myself, I was trying to uh, to start some uh, startup ideas to bring them to life, and then I had some uh, problems. Uh, so we decided that uh, with my team that it, it, it's uh, time to kind of create the environment ourselves. Though I would not say that uh, we are the only environment shapers, but uh, we are uh, among the main ones. And uh, at the time, uh, it was very difficult to uh, kind of uh, even uh, uh, to, to explain the word startup, uh, which is totally different right now. So a little bit about me. I'm, uh, uh, I'm the founder of the uh, Armenia Foundation. As uh, all Armenians, we feel ourselves as the residents of the world. And of course, we are uh, proud citizens of Armenia. A little bit about this, uh, the economy uh, of uh, ICT industry. Uh, if you compare the ICT uh, industry with the uh, uh, Euro Arctic Union's uh, countries, uh, uh, then uh, again, Euro uh, uh, economic uh, uh, union countries. Then we are doing pretty good. Uh, but if you uh, if you compare it with the EU countries, uh, of course, a lot of uh, still remains to, to be done. Um, so, but uh, here uh, I provide some uh, points uh, why coming and establishing a company in Armenia still can be a good option uh, for those and uh, the others uh, uh, from, uh, and from Europe and from uh, neighboring countries. Uh, so the ecosystem is pretty uh, adaptive right now uh, and uh, attractive, I guess. Um, about uh, Startup Armenia Foundation, um, uh, what we uh, have as a goal is uh, to, to reach to a level that the uh, startup uh, ecosystem of Armenia will uh, provide products for all over the world. Uh, right now, we have started, as I said, already five years to develop an ecosystem, an innovation and uh, technology-based uh, uh, economy uh, and uh, right now we are doing pretty good and with the main uh, other main players of the ecosystem uh, we have uh, changed uh, this uh, sphere this field in Armenia uh, in a very good direction uh, so now we have uh, more uh, like a business consultancy uh, and uh, uh, like uh, five, seven years ago, there were no uh, uh, venture companies. Uh, only in 2014, if I'm not mistaken, there, uh, there was established the, the, the first uh, uh, venture company was established in Armenia, it was Rhinatus Ventures. Right now, there are so many uh, uh, different tools of uh, finding investments in Armenia, within Armenia, even. Uh, consultancy as, a, as a, another sphere also has been developed uh, during these uh, five, seven years. Uh, and uh, right now, uh, there are uh, more than five accelerators and incubators also for the startups. So I would say uh, now uh, the things have changed. Now, accelerators and incubators and investments, investors are. Uh, looking for startups, uh, it was vice versa uh, some five, seven years ago. And uh, some numbers also, uh, we have almost 400 companies in the industry, uh, more than 1,000 startups already, I would say. In 2016, they were less than 100. Uh, and uh, almost uh, 30,000 uh, people involved in the industry. 
so about our project that we do ourselves, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about Startup uh, Club, uh, which is a kind of uh, a kinder, kindergarten type of thing uh, for startups. So we are starting from eight years, uh, choosing uh, those children who have uh, uh, a character of a businessman from schools, and then uh, we are providing in these clubs then a kind of alphabet, we are teaching them the alphabet of a business, uh, I would say. Uh, so, design thinking, uh, thinking about creating their product, uh, thinking about how uh, to solve certain problems in a way to earn money. And then uh, uh, we have uh, startup school as a, as a uh, next step. Uh, so here we have a, a program a curriculum for uh, from uh, 13 years up to 16, 17 years, where we provide a uh, little bit uh, of knowledge of real life establishing company, uh, working on MVP. Uh, and bringing their product even to the market, uh, like, uh, uh, like some customer acquisition, this, uh, and then we go to startup uh, university. Uh, by the way, uh, I'm, I'm the first time in our system, I'm talking about uh, startup university initiative, which is not uh, established. Uh, startup clubs and startup school we have already, but startup university we are gonna uh, uh, create it uh, in. Uh, coming future. So here we want to give more, let's say, a little bit academic knowledge of uh, uh, doing business. Uh, uh, and uh, as far as uh, startup clubs and startup schools are accepted already uh, for uh, for the Sicilian uh, entities uh, worldwide, we are working with the Indian ones, with the United States based uh, companies, uh, which are providing education in this, uh, for these ages. Uh, right now, we are working to find partners for startup university as well. So here we will teach them uh, uh, to uh, go to the global markets, to uh, network and find uh, global partners and scale up uh, and uh, come to the final success. And then we have another uh, uh, Milestone, which is called CSI Startup Summit. Uh, by the way, this is one of our most, uh, I would say, successful projects. Some people even uh, recognize NOAA's uh, for, from this uh, project. So this is a seven days uh, camp, uh, camp uh, in, a, in a nature, uh, which is a unique uh, platform, uh, which brings together already uh, uh, Businessmen from 50 countries, they are coming to Armenia, living in Armenia. Uh, more than 100 investing companies are represented there. Uh, so uh, this is a unique opportunity for any startup or any business in Armenia uh, to meet uh, anybody uh, from the field, uh, the, the giants of the field in, in uh, Armenia near Lake Sevan, seven days in very informal uh, environment and uh, you know this is boosting I guess the startup ecosystem a lot in Armenia. Uh, so basically uh, uh, if there will be time left I would like to show a short video of uh, about CSI Startup Summit. And then, it, um, yeah, it's short, sure. Yes, um, so basically <laughs> Do you hear me? I, I can't. I can go on. Uh, yeah, I don't see the video. You, you, you don't see the video? No, we still see the final slide from your uh, of the startup club. I think I hear the video, but I don't see it. Okay. Uh, You want to you want to try one more time or or no? Uh, let me let me try to. I'm sorry for that. Do not. There, there you go. 
So this is Lake Seva, very beautiful place. And this is Sister Star of Sun. We call it Sister because we use uh, we have done it already in Dubai, Goa. Okay. So, is that finished? Yeah. Basically, like right. the Ministry of IT of Armenia, we are signing uh, some contracts uh, with uh, some companies. They actually are signing their signing contracts, finding investment, and getting a lot of funds. They are former partners here, which is uh, in my support, in New York. This is providing a unique opportunity for young startups to feel free with the content and the music. The speaker around the class. And also, there are many prizes for launching their products. Uh, so, uh, so Hago, if, if I can ask you one follow-up question quickly, um, you know, to for this whole project to succeed and for startup cultures to succeed in Armenia, you know, what what would help most? Whether it's uh, from the government, from international communities, you know, is there is there something that would help this process even more than than uh, you know achieve even more than it has? I would like to say that uh, I see the future of Armenia very bright. I see that uh, we, we have this uh, type of, uh, uh, like, uh, there is a term in which is called uh, a military nation, where anybody is a militant to, to protect their country. So uh, I guess that Armenia, is, especially these days, is uh, very actual. I guess that Armenia is going to go to, for, for this path. And uh, I, I see that uh, um, with our partners, we're going to create uh, an Armenia with uh, a businessman's uh, a startup nation, as Mr. President says. So I, get, I see that uh, almost everybody uh, who has this character of doing business will have this opportunity uh, to start. And Father Armenia Foundation and a lot of other uh, our partners are providing this opportunity. And I see that, uh, uh, and uh, here you will hear the story of Tumo and also uh, uh, our, our partner uh, uh, from so Software Construct. Also, they are doing a great job. So I see that uh, in some five, ten years, Armenia is going to become one of the main startup nations, changing a lot of things in this field. Okay. This is already the future in Ireland of Armenia, and uh, everything is being done already. I mean, there's nothing left to be done. Okay, well, that's that's fantastic. Thank you. So, so that sets us up nicely to to bring in uh, Mary Lou Papazian. So, you know, um, Hagob has obviously talked some about educational approaches, but I'd love to get your um, opinion about you know the opportunities and challenges for improving education across Armenia preparing students for knowledge-based work. Um, and maybe you could talk also to the extent to which COVID-19 has uh, has affected all of that. 
Yes, hi. Um, I'm Lou Papazian, the CEO of the Tumo Center for Creative Technologies. Uh, I'm going to share with you uh, a presentation just to set you in the environment of the Tumo Center, and then hopefully we'll have time for some questions and answers. Let me share my screen. One second. Yeah. One second. Yeah. Okay. Um, you see my screen? Okay. Yes. I'm going to talk really fast uh, and go through a lot of information. And hopefully, we're, uh, we'll have time later to have some uh, question and answers. So TUMO is a new kind of educational program at the intersection of uh, technology and design where teenagers are in charge of their own learning process. It covers 14 areas and disciplines. I will talk about them later and uh, what we call creative technologies. It is a very demanding program but very attractive to teenagers who learn not just the technical skill and the using those uh, tools, but also learn to take initiative, take risk, uh, be on top of their own learning, and uh, which makes them unstoppable. We currently have around 20,000 students, uh, but because of COVID uh, conditions, we are now open uh, for the uh, doing the offline program for one third of our capacity and we are running the rest uh, online and have all the rest of our participants um, using the online program. We have extended internationally already. Uh, we have centers in Paris, we have a center in Beirut, we have a center in Moscow that just opened. And next month, we're opening in Berlin, end of November, in, in Tirana and Kiev. And we have a bunch of other centers um, online uh, trying to open uh, later after uh, next year. So those are our four uh, skills and that range from, as I said, they range from you know, technical skills to design skills, from robotics to programming to 3D modeling to photography to others. Uh, we have created uh, an interface uh, that follows every student and support them and schedules uh, based on availability and based on their own choices. Uh, and we have created thousands, hundreds of activities. And those are, for example, in Armenia, they're in Armenian. In Paris, they're in French. Uh, in Germany, they will be in um, German. Uh, and they allow students to do their self-learning in order to get into workshops. So what are what is self-learning? What is workshop? Self-learning is the activities that you do in order to get ready for the workshop. And those are examples of our environment from Paris to uh, to the Yerevan. We have a bunch of uh, workshop leaders that come every year uh, to teach um, for free, volunteers. And here are some of the examples. Uh, and they come, they donate their time for at least two weeks uh, very intensively and we expect the student to expect the students to participate in those learning labs above and beyond our regular program uh, and finally we have uh, something called a portfolio so we don't have uh, a diploma we don't have grades but we have something called the living portfolio where students collect all the everything they have been doing and done and they update them with uh, the latest of their uh, results and they can share it with their parents, uh, the university uh, or uh, potential uh, work uh, areas. Um, I probably forgot to tell you that it's uh, for students from 12 to 18 year old uh, and it's free of charge. Uh, Jumping online during the lockdown has not been very difficult for us. Uh, why? 
because we already had everything ready to to take to the online uh, platform. Uh, as I said, we have um, workshop leaders uh, in town or in Armenia and from overseas that uh, prepared workshops and we have been running these workshops online um, since the lockdown, since March. Uh, the rest of the workshop leaders that are from overseas, they donated they their time and followed us uh, and followed the program and were able to give us a lot of very valuable um, workshop and, and, and content. Uh, we uh, updated uh, our system to be very flexible and now with the uh, one-third uh, offline uh, Students, first come, first serve, they can reserve space uh, in the center or centers because we have at least, we have four centers in Armenia and the rest are all online. And our, of course, coaches uh, have been working uh, from home and uh, from the center and always supporting uh, the students. We have created uh, apps to give very quick uh, feedback uh, from tech, tech feedback to uh, if they had any problems. And in some cases, we were also circulating uh, equipment for those who were not able or, or could not have access to computers or laptops. Uh, we have a huge database uh, that allows us to follow the progress of the students uh, live and see where they connected, what are they doing, if they were able to do the, the activities, uh, if the examination has uh, taken place. Uh, and that, that database is all online. So working from home uh, did not stop us and we were able to follow the, the progress. And uh, of course, see the results and help them uh, finalize everything. We also have created uh, several apps uh, to make sure that the students have direct contact with us and have everything transparent uh, and uh, be able to ask us any question they had and be able to uh, get in and get out from workshops. Uh, we have done something very interesting lately, something called Tumo in a Box. We're going to open the first Tumo in a Box end of this month uh, in Berg, which is the eastern, uh, eastern, northern eastern uh, area of Armenia, which will allow the village kids to uh, have access to technology and internet and computers, and uh, of course follow uh, the online program we have um, and do the, their own activities from the village. Um, we are planning to have around 100 boxes uh, in Armenia and um, nagorno karabakh also. And um, we, uh, we are planning to build uh, extra hubs. Uh, and hopefully after the COVID situation is passed, we will be able to go to the hub more frequently because the hubs are the places where they will have more resources and be able to connect with their peer uh, students uh, from Armenia. Uh, but uh, in the case of the COVID and the restrictions, we will restrict uh, their activities in the box. We have done, finally, we have done something above age 18, which is uh, the uh, the school called Ecole 42, a French program, we brought it to Armenia and we are already running it in Armenia uh, since beginning of September. It's a coding school, uh, quite sophisticated with no uh, teachers. Uh, it's a peer evaluation based on peer evaluation and based on a very big selection uh, we're having some 200 or 400 students from which 100 or 150 will be selected to continue the program for uh, the next two years. And hopefully we will take that to 
uh, other cities in Armenia too. And finally, we have been working with the EU uh, to build uh, a big center. These are the uh, first pictures of uh, the center. Uh, it's called uh, Converges Center. It will be a combination of business and education, uh, and it will allow to have a lot of shared spaces uh, and um, something similar to what we do uh, in our regular program, the TUMO program, uh, learning labs, but for university students uh, and beyond and for research. So uh, this is my uh, presentation. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing now. Uh, and I don't know if I have been able to squeeze everything in the five minutes. Yeah. Well, uh... The, no, that was that was very very interesting, very inspiring. I, I guess my question to you is really the same thing I asked uh, Haka, which is, um, you know, what do you need to succeed to scale up? Is it you know policy changes, government help, international help? Um, you know, what would you need to succeed even more? Um, I don't want to say we don't need anything, <laughs> but uh, we need. We need money, uh, essentially, because our program is free of charge. So we need sponsors. Uh, and the more we get sponsored, the more we open uh, new boxes uh, and continue. Uh, we have been very lucky, and we have the Conversion Center uh, already sponsored by the EU. We have uh, four centers in Armenia, four hubs, Kumo hubs, that have been sponsored by uh, other organizations and private organizations that uh, the government is helping us in spreading the TUMO box. Uh, the government of uh, nagorno karabakh uh, will sponsor the first three boxes already. Uh, we have the green light to go and prepare them already and before the end of the year we're having the three boxes in nagorno karabakh already installed and up and running. Uh, the more more money we have, the more we can spread uh, the TUMO to every single uh, Armenian teenager. Uh, the franchise programs uh, are helping us with the franchise fee that are, help, uh, that are uh, of course, adding to our uh, operation here in Armenia and making sure that uh, we can open more centers in Armenia. Okay, fantastic. All right, so let me bring uh, Karen Gregorian into the conversation uh, from Soft Construct Company. Um, you know, since you're from the private sector here, I, you know, to what extent has your company, your group of companies, been able to find IT talent in Armenia, and what are you doing to try to, you know, increase the pipeline of, of talent into your companies? Okay, thank you very much for your question. I welcome all of you. And uh, speaking about Soft Construct, found in 2011, uh, we can definitely consider that it's a startup factory. Yeah, it is one of the leaders of the technological revolution in Armenia, and which which has been providing innovative and competitive tech solutions uh, to local and international markets for more than 10 years. So we have branches in 50 countries around the world and uh, our company is always in the lookout for new young IT talents. And we can definitely say that SoftConstruct has created all necessary team all, or necessary conditions for new IT talents to, uh, to give our staff to I mean, to complete uh, freedom to express themselves and to implement their interesting and sometimes why not uh, for a great ideas. Uh, so we prepared the video, which I think uh, includes the whole answer of your question. Mm -hmm. Let me the video. Yeah. Yes. There we go. Yeah. Do you see? Not yet. Okay. That looks good. Baruja 
Xi'an Group of Companies started its activities in 1989, expanding in four main sectors: IT, banking, agriculture, and gaming. Over the years, our dream has been to create a global and world-renowned company. In the present time, the number of our employees in Armenia and abroad is about 4,300. As we know, Armenia, in addition to having no access to the sea, is also under a conditional blockade. As a result of which, we will always have more expensive export routes than other countries. In these conditions, Armenia is in an unequal competitive situation in the international arena. Meanwhile, the IT sphere is the sector of the economy that does not allow our competitors to have the above-mentioned competitive advantages. As it does not depend on the open or closed borders, access to the sea, condition of roads, or transportation costs, here products and services are bought and sold online. Another great advantage of the IT sector is the fact that only a specialist computer and office space are required for its activities. No raw materials, equipment, or special technologies are required to organize the work. Here, everything is created by a man providing a service. And selling only through a computer and the internet, our company is always in the lookout for new young IT talents, and we can definitely consider Soft Constructs, founded in 2011, a startup factory. It is one of the leaders of the technological revolution in Armenia, which has been providing innovative and competitive tech solutions to local and international markets for more than 10 years. We have branches in 15 countries around the world. Soft Constructs has created all necessary conditions for new IT talents. We give our staff a complete freedom to express themselves and to implement their interesting and brilliant ideas. The company is actively using artificial intelligence (AI) and machine learning (ML) technologies. Recent innovations include AGNA, the automated sports data collecting tool, and Huri. The smart virtual gaming assistant that uses AI and voice recognition technology. Soft Constructs is also the basis for many other leading brands and products, such as the gaming service provider Bet Constructs, which has won numerous awards in the spheres of programming and software. It provides online and land-based gaming solutions and has programming, sales, and service centers in 14 countries. Products also include the real-time data provider Feed Constructs, drag and drop website builder Ucraft, new blockchain technology-based cryptocurrency Fast Token, Fast Shift payment system, CRM automated marketing and analytics tool designed to meet the needs of our partners, Panda VR, a virtual platform for organizing digital business meetings and discussions, was created at the right time, taking into account the problems caused by the pandemic. The company has more than 30 awards, including the British titles Best Eye Gaming Technology Provider, Innovator of the Year, Best Customer Service. The company has more than 50 products, more than 15 international licenses, and over 400 payment systems. Soft Constructs has always supported and participated in many IT festivals, exhibitions, and events in the IT sector of Armenia. Our company has also recorded a number of achievements in the banking sector. Founded in 1994, Fast Credit Capital is currently the largest leading credit organization in the financial market in Armenia, with 24 branches in Armenia and three branches in Great Britain. Agriculture is one of our new developing areas, which has great export potential. We have created super-intensive farms, the largest in this sector in Armenia. After the tree plantings of 2021 and 2022, we will count more than one million trees in our economy. In addition to this, our company has always attached great importance to charitable activities. In particular, we have implemented a number of programs to support the families of fallen freedom fighters who died defending their homeland, as well as the families of servicemen. And we are going to continue this pro-Armenian activity. Thank you very much for watching. Yes,、uh, I don't see you. You're, you're.、Uh, I hear you, but I don't see you. The video seems to. I, Now you see me.、Uh, you see me.
So I think we're having some technical difficulties and our time is is up anyway in just about 40 seconds. So so I'm going to bring this to a close. I want to thank everyone for for watching. I want to thank Harasis for for you know doing um doing something on Armenia and really highlighting um the transformation that's underway and the attempt to lead economic development and uh, future economic uh, economic development really around uh, knowledge based skills. So uh, with that, I want to thank uh, the panelists. I want to thank President Sarkisian, and I want to thank everybody for, for watching. Um, and with that, we are going to say uh, goodbye. Thank you all. Have a nice Bye-bye. day.